Have you ever wondered how you can prevent heart disease? Heart disease. Have you thought about it much? I sure hope you have because heart disease kills one in four Americans. That's right. Heart disease kills one in four Americans. It's serious. Have you thought about heart disease? Have you put much time into thinking about your heart? Greetings, Remedy Seekers. Thoughtful, thoughtful Remedy Seekers. Welcome. Today is the day that we discuss heart disease. Welcome to another video. It feels so good to have you all here with me. Thank you for joining me. It means the world to me to have you here with me. You could be anywhere right now. You could watch any video, but you've chosen to share your time with me. So thank you, Remedy Seekers. Thank you very much. How much time do you spend thinking about your heart? None of us, none of us can live without our heart. Yet so many of us tend to spend more time focusing on our other organs. Remedy Seekers, today we are going to talk about heart disease. Heart disease kills every 36 seconds. Let me repeat that for you. Heart disease kills someone every 36 seconds. This is serious. Do you ever spend time thinking about your heart? How you can protect it? How you can safeguard it? How you can treat your heart in all the right ways so that it lasts for you. Heart disease is what we're talking about today. How much time do you take to think about your heart? None of us can live without a heart, right? I mean, who amongst us can live without a heart? Our hearts are so important. Today, we are talking about heart disease. Heart disease that kills one in four Americans. Heart disease that kills one person every 36 seconds. Heart disease. How much time have you put into thinking about your heart, Remedy Seekers? Do you only think about your heart on Valentine's Day? When do you think about your heart? Do you only think about your heart when you're in love? When do you actually set aside time to think about your heart? Some of us only think about the heart, the beautiful red shaped heart when it's Valentine's Day. This has nothing to do with that. I'm talking about your real heart. I'm talking about the heart in your chest, the muscle, the muscle that pumps blood and oxygen throughout your entire body. Remedy Seekers, today we are not talking about Valentine's or romantic love, but we're talking about your heart. How often do you work your heart muscle? How do you feed your heart? Are you feeding your heart properly? What are you doing for your heart, Remedy Seekers? Today, we're speaking about the heart. Your heart has nothing to do with chocolate candy and roses. Now, I love chocolate candy and roses just as much as the next lady. However, it has nothing to do with heart disease. Heart disease is serious. Yes, I'm being a little playful, but we should never play with heart disease. Heart disease is serious. Heart disease is what we're talking about today. Remedy Seekers, today we are giving the heart the attention that it deserves. We are giving the heart the attention that it deserves. In a way, heart disease is a foodborne illness because it's brought about by what you put 
and your mouth. Food impacts your heart. Think about it. What you put in your mouth impacts your entire body. It impacts your hair, your skin, all of your organs, including your heart. But the heart is the organ that we give the least amount of attention to. Today, we're giving the heart the attention that it deserves. We're talking about what we can do to save our hearts, to make sure our hearts pump properly so that it can help us live our best life for as long as possible. Today, we're giving the heart the attention that it deserves. As I've said before, the food that you eat impacts your heart. So the food that you eat can make your heart work well, or it can cause your heart to not work well for you. Today, we're talking about the impact of what you put in your mouth and how it affects your heart. There are many foods that you can eat that will help your heart pump its best, but there are many foods that you can eat that will make it difficult for your heart to pump because it's getting a lack of oxygen. Today, we're talking about what you put in your mouth. Remedy seekers, oh, I tell you all the time, I tell you all the time that there is a natural remedy for nearly every ailment that you have. Remedy Seeker, I tell you this because it's true. I tell you this to empower you. I want you to know that what you put in your body impacts your health in every way imaginable. It affects you from your hair follicles down to your toenails. Everything that you choose to put in your mouth affects your health, including your heart. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Nicole Hart. I've been making videos right here on YouTube for over 10 years. If you enjoy this content, please click the subscribe button and then click the notification bell so that you never miss one of my videos. YouTube will always notify you. Welcome newcomers, welcome to the channel. I'm Nicole Hart, it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Remedy seekers, I want to press upon you that what you put in your mouth matters because it does. Food has energy. Food has so much energy. And that energy in food affects your body in the most positive ways. If you choose to eat real fruits and vegetables, I'm not talking about food in packages. As a matter of fact, I want you to avoid food in packages as much as possible. I want you to eat food that's been grown. When you go into your supermarket, I want you to purchase food that grew in dirt or water. I want you to purchase real food, real food, not dead food on the shelves in packages because the food that you put in your body impacts your body. But we are talking about the heart. Remember, none of us can live without our heart. So what do you need to avoid? Well, you should avoid those foods and packages. When you go to your local supermarket, shop on the outside. You notice the outside is always loaded with food, although on the inside, some of those shelves are empty, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, many of the shelves have been empty. However, when you shop on the outside, there's always so much food available. Farmers are always growing fresh food. The grocery store always has fresh foods available, fruits and vegetables. I want you to pick those up because those are good for your heart. Everyone, do me a favor and click the like button. If you are enjoying this content, do me a favor and click the like button. That allows YouTube to disseminate this video to a wider audience. If you're enjoying this content, please click the like button. Thank you. I ask you, and I asked last week as well, and I asked 
on a short as well. And that question is, can you live a healthy lifestyle? Can you? Can you live a healthy lifestyle? If you remember from last week, the answer is yes. I believe you can live a healthy lifestyle. It is a matter of making a choice. Remedy seekers, you can live a healthy lifestyle. We all can. Once you are fed up with the way you have been eating, you will make a change. Once you're fed up with your waistline expanding, you will make a change. Once you're fed up with diagnoses that you don't want, you'll make a change. But how about we make that change before a bad diagnosis? How about we make a change prior to our waistlines expanding? How about we make a decision today to live a healthy lifestyle. Can you live a healthy lifestyle, Remedy Seekers? I say yes, but it's not up to me. It's up to you. Will you? Will you choose as we go into the new year? Will you choose to live a healthier lifestyle? Did you know that 90%, 90% of heart disease cases are preventable. Of course they're preventable. It's caused because of what you put in your body. So what you put in your body causes the heart disease. Therefore, you can heal your body based upon what you choose to put in. You're in control of that. We are not always presented with the options that we would like, but typically we all have options. We all tend to have choices. You get to choose. This is your body. This is my body. What do you put in it matters and the choice is yours. Even if you're a small person watching this video, you could say to mom, to dad, to your caregiver, to grandma, to whoever is looking out for you, you could say, May I have more vegetables, please? You can choose. We all have choices. Now, sometimes we don't have the option of making the choices that we would prefer. Sometimes we do not get the choices that we prefer, but those are our choices anyway. And then we have to make the best selection possible. Sometimes I go to the grocery store and I want to purchase an organic cabbage, but there aren't any organic cabbages available. Sometimes I want to purchase zucchini, but that isn't available. Sometimes I have to choose organic mushrooms or organic bell peppers or organic onions and use that for healthy fruits and vegetables. And that's okay. The choice is still mine and the choice is still yours. What you put in your body, Remedy Seekers, it matters. What you put in your body is your choice. Heart disease is preventable. 90% of heart disease cases are preventable. Close your mouth, prevent heart disease. Think about what you put in your mouth to save your heart. Save your heart. Saving your heart saves your life. Can't live without it. If you have already been diagnosed with high blood pressure, change today. If you've already been diagnosed with diabetes, change today. If you have already been diagnosed with high cholesterol, change today. Change today. Diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, Remedy seekers, if you already have one of these diagnoses, change today. Stop eating food that harms you today. If you already have been diagnosed with all three, oh, I'm sorry. If you've been diagnosed with all three, then this is your confirmation. Take this, take my word, accept this as your confirmation that you must change this coming year change. Stop it. 
because you are on your way to heart disease. If you have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes, listen to me. Rewind this video and play it again. Share this video. Listen, listen, listen to me. If you already have those three diagnoses, even one of those three, you need to make a change. But if you have all three, please, please change what you put in your mouth because you might not be here to watch another one of my videos. If you take birth control pills, if you smoke cigarettes, you must make a change today. If you have a family history of heart disease, that is important to note. But remember, it's about what you put in your mouth. But if you take birth control pills and you smoke, oh my word, you must, you must stop. You must change your behavior. You either get off those birth control pills, perhaps try something else, if that's important to you. Get off of those cigarettes, if that's important to you. But if you have birth control pills and you smoke cigarettes, you take the birth control pills and you smoke cigarettes, this too is your confirmation. Listen to me. If you're taking birth control pills and smoking, I need you to make a change this coming year ASAP. If you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or diabetes, Lord have mercy. If you have all three, I need you to make a change immediately. Don't wait until the new year. Start today. Remedy Seekers, I apologize for becoming so passionate but you all are important to me. I've been here on YouTube for 10 years with my channel steadily growing. I couldn't have this channel grow so well without your support. Thank you for your support. And I'm here to support you. I want you to live and I want you to live well. I want you to live your best life and I want you to live it more abundantly. You cannot do that if you're not here. What you feed yourself matters. It matters, especially when it comes to your heart. We can't live without it. You see, Remedy Seekers, your heart must have a steady flow of oxygen going to it. It must have this. And some of the foods that we eat regularly clog the artery. It clogs the artery because it's loaded with grease and fats. Those of you who love eating beef, oh boy, so bad for your heart. Some of you are enjoying lamb, oh, so tasty, but you cannot have that often. You see, Remedy Seekers, your heart must have a steady flow of oxygen going to it. Your heart must have that steady oxygen flow. Some of the foods that you eat clog your artery, your arteries and your heart, so teeny tiny, so small, your arteries get clogged when you eat food that's heavy in grease. Food that's heavy in grease, some of the grease you can't see, but it's there. For example, if you're eating beef, beef is loaded with oils, fats, grease, bad for your health. Some of you are eating lamb. It's now in most supermarkets, it's bad for your health remedy seekers. When I say it's bad for your health, let me qualify this. Meats tend to be tasty to those in society that eat it. However, meat tends to have fat, loads of fat. That's what makes your steak taste so juicy. That's what makes your lamb chops taste so juicy. It's fat and it's that fat that clogs your artery. It's that fat that will make sure you're not here to watch another one of my videos. I'm telling you this because it's important. It's important to eat lean. If you're going to eat meat, and I'll tell you later in this video what you really should eat, but if you're going to eat meats, it's important that you eat lean cuts because quite frankly, it's extremely bad for your arteries. 
Now, when I'm talking about your artery being blocked with that fat, that fat and oils that's blocking it, it's causing a block in your arteries. So now you have an artery that's clogged up. Let's use my hand here as an artery. And then the artery is getting clogged. Now, before we even clog it, air is going in and out of this artery. Air and blood is going through this artery to your heart. Now the artery begins to get clogged with the fat from the meats, fat from other things, not just meat, but especially from meat as well. It's clogging the artery. Now there's less room. Remember how much room it had for the oxygen to flow through with the blood? Now it's clogged, so there's less room. There's less room for it to get through. Your blood can barely get through. And remember, you have to have that steady flow. You need that steady flow of oxygen. Now you don't have a steady flow. Now you have a clog. And if you have high blood pressure, your heart is really pumping hard, hard, hard to try and get the little bit of oxygen it can through it. If you have high blood pressure, stop. If you have high blood pressure, just stop. Stop eating meat altogether, especially red meat. I can't make you do anything. All I can do is tell you. So I'm here to tell you. I know it might pain some of you. The truth can hurt. But I'm telling you because I love you. I'm telling you because I need you. I'm telling you because the world needs you. Your family needs you. Your friends need you. Your job needs you. I'm telling you because you're important to not only me, but to someone else. So again, I apologize for my passion, but this is such an important topic to me. So thank you for bearing with me. I again apologize for getting so emotional, but um, I just want you to live. I just want you to live your best life. There are three major risk factors for heart disease, and that is high LDLs, high triglycerides, and low HDLs. These are high risk factors for heart disease. If you do not know your numbers, if what I'm speaking sounds like, what is she talking about? You need to visit your doctor. You need to visit your physician and ask them to give you a cholesterol test. They need to test your cholesterol lipids panel. They need to test it so that you know your numbers. If you have high LDL, you are at risk for heart disease. If you have high triglyceride levels, you are at risk for heart disease. If you have low HDL levels, you are at risk for heart disease. If you do not know your numbers, ask for a lipid test. Ask your physician to have your blood drawn. Ask for a lab, ask for a lab, a blood work order so that they can draw your blood and test, test. It's a simple test, just a simple blood draw and then you will know your numbers. Don't wait until you have heart disease. See, there's things you can do. There are tasks you can go to your physician and ask for so that you know. You don't have to wait for your doctor to choose to run tests on you and then later tell you, oh, you have heart disease. No, 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 no. You can know where you're at today. Go to your physician, call, go online, schedule an appointment, ask for a lipid panel, lipid. If you will forget the word lipid, just say cholesterol. I like to have my cholesterol tested. I want a cholesterol test. You will have to fast. You will have to not eat for 12 hours. Oh, don't worry, you can do it. You cannot eat for 12 hours. At night, schedule the time at night that you're going to stop eating and drinking, only very little water, only when necessary, and wait until the morning. Early morning, go straight to the lab, have your blood drawn ask for this test. For everyone else listening to me today, if you want to avoid heart disease and you do not have the means to have your blood tested to see where you're at, how you're doing, I want you to avoid oils. 
avoid all oils. Butter, avoid it. All oils. Now they say it's okay to have olive oil. Well, that impacts something else. If you clear out all the oils from your diet, then you don't have to wonder, what oil is this? What oil was that? What was the type of oil I needed to have again? What kind of oil shouldn't I have? Avoid oils. Avoid meat. Avoid fish. Fish is oily. I know you're thinking, but what about those omegas? There are different ways that you can get the omegas that you need. You need to avoid oil. You need to avoid meat. You need to avoid fish. You need to avoid chicken. Oh, I know, I know. You're ready to click off the video now, I know. You have to avoid it all. All these things, you have to avoid dairy. These things help get you closer to heart disease. Abstaining from these things keeps you further away from heart disease. It's about your diet, Remedy Seekers. It's about your diet. You must eat nothing that has a mother or a face. If it has a mother or a face, you need to avoid it. You need to avoid it if you want to avoid heart disease. Now the choice is yours, of course. I know, butter is delicious. I know, fish is great. It's a nice lean protein. I know, chicken is delicious. And the best of all, red meat, oh wow. But if you want to avoid heart disease, it's important that you move closer to the V word, vegan. You need to move closer to a vegan diet, my loves. A vegan diet will not only save the animals, save the planet, but it will also help your heart. I know. Sometimes when you say the word vegan, it's like you've just said a curse word. You use profanity. But it's what you must move closer to if you want to avoid heart disease. A vegan diet is the best diet to avoid heart disease, along with a Mediterranean diet. A vegan diet will help you because you'll load your body with fresh fruits and vegetables. Remember I told you, when you shop at the grocery store, shop on the outside, there's always fresh fruits and vegetables. No one wants it, it's like the best kept secret. Fruits and vegetables. Fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, they're always at the grocery store even during pandemics. No one seems to want those things. They want items in boxes and cans. Boxes and cans, that's dead food. Boxes and cans, that's dead food. The food is dead. How can you put something dead in your body and expect to live? Same concept when it comes to eating dead carcass, meats, anything that had a face or a mother, you must avoid if you like to avoid heart disease. We all want to avoid heart disease and I understand that it can be challenging, but you can do, you can do one thing at a time, slowly but surely. You can stop with the red meat first because that, whew, if all you do is avoid red meat, you'll be doing your heart a favor. You can stop with the red meat first, then you can stop with the chicken and pork. And then you can get yourself down to only having fish and seafoods. Then you can go down from fish and seafoods to just a plant-based diet. There are levels to it. You don't have to do it overnight all at once. For the greatest level of success, tear yourself, tear yourself. I know others want me to tell you, make a change today, right now. No, 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 no. That would be ideal, but I want you to be successful. I want you to have success with this. And for some, in order to have success, they need to take steps, steps, steps. So for the first three months of the year, avoid anything red, no red meat, no bison, no lamb, no steak, no red meat, no beef, 
nothing red. Next three months, cut out your porks and chicken. No pork, no chicken, eliminate it. Next three months, and remember, all this time while you're lowering, eliminating these things, you're adding in fish. You're adding in seafood to supplement. Maybe you want to use a little bit of meat that you do use and boil it down to its shreds and add something to make a sauce with. So then you just add a little sauce to your meals if you must have meat, fish, and dairy. If you must have dead protein, there are things that you can do, okay? So take your time and do it in steps so that you can be successful. I want you to avoid heart disease. Remedy Seekers, if you appreciate this video, please click the like button. Please click the like button or else I may never make a video like this again, worried that I was too passionate and oh, my viewers hated it. So if you do like the content, do me a favor and click the like button. I hope I wasn't too hard on you all. I hope that you understood that my passion is because I want you to be healthy. I want you to live. I want you to be here with me to grow this channel to 1 million subscribers. So thank you so much for watching and for listening. But before I go, I also want to underscore that a vegan diet not only can help prevent heart disease, if you already suffer from heart disease, it can reverse the damage. A vegan diet can reverse the damage. It's also good for cancer, a vegan diet. They've done so many studies on what a vegan diet can do for you. They've took blood, blood from meat eaters and blood from those who are vegetarian, vegan, excuse me, vegan. And they took cancer cells. So let me start over. They took the blood of a vegan, someone who only eats fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. And they took a blood from a person who had cancer. And they put a drop of that blood in the Petri dish with the vegan blood and that vegan blood eliminated those cancer cells. In other words, trying to find somebody that's always had a vegan diet that has heart disease and cancer, you won't be able to find them. Vegan diet, Mediterranean diet. That's what you want to have. Work on eliminating meat from your diet. All right, Remedy Seekers, thank you for watching. See you soon. See you in the next video. Bye.